Clarity on Fire, a podcast for people who know what they don't want out of their life and career, but aren't sure what they'd rather be doing. In a world where it's easy to exist, but hard to feel alive, we, Kristen and Rachel, two certified life and career coaches, are here to help you cut through the information overload, get unstuck, and focus not just on how you can have a career you're passionate about, but how to create a whole life that feels fulfilling. So join us here, where we serve up inspiration and down-to-earth wisdom in a way that only two best friends can. We want you to experience the relief of knowing that, yes, you're allowed to want more out of your life and career. And no, you don't have to wander through the dark anymore. Our job is to light the fire that shows you the way. Let's go. Okay, this is Rachel's Apology Tour 2019. Yeah, we need to start with a huge apology, you guys. So our website in the past couple weeks has just systematically decided it wasn't going to work (laughs) in any way. It's just breaking down piece by piece by piece. So All of a sudden, too. So for anyone who contacted us or tried to contact us for about two or three weeks, we didn't even know that our contact form was broken. So we weren't receiving any emails from people. Which was very confusing, I have to say. We were like, what is happening to To our business? I should have noticed earlier that people weren't reaching out to us. (laughs) (laughs) But I didn't. Uh, Thankfully, someone was kind enough to point that out to us. And then we got on that. That's now fixed. Our quiz broke. As of today, Friday, we're recording this a few days before this blog comes out. Our quiz is still broken. It was... It's supposed to be done today, but it was also supposed to be done two days ago or four days ago or five days ago. So, you know, hopefully by the time you're listening to this, it's fixed. I'm so sorry. It was down for so long. Yeah. If you're new to Clarity on Fire and you're like, I've been trying to take this quiz. We have a a form on the quiz page where you can just put your name and email address and... We will let you know as soon as it's back up and running. We have a whole team of people on this. Yeah, no, no. Like, please don't think that Rachel is trying to solve this problem with our limited technological oh, prowess. Nobody wants that. Nobody <laughs> wants that. And we're not, that's not what we're doing. Um, and then our entire website crashed and was down for a while on Tuesday, which was the day that we announced all of these new changes. And so people were trying to like add their name to our people pleasing course VIP list. They were trying to sign up for coaching, coaching or join the wait list. And then they couldn't. And so, I mean, seriously, it's not even Mercury retrograde. I checked. <laughs> yeah, we did. Because I was like, well, that clearly will explain it. No, no. It's much, I don't know, whatever we did, we we really messed it up. And or this is a slingshot effect and it's forcing us to get our butts in gear and actually, I don't know, change some things that we've been meaning to change for a long time. There's really nothing to motivate you, like everything Everything breaking. Everything breaking all at once. Yeah. Suddenly. So our apologies about that. And before we get into my blog, I do want to remind you that you have a few more days to take advantage of talking to us about coaching. Remember, or maybe you don't because this is the first episode you're hearing that we're talking about this, but we are now changing the way that we take on -on one-on-one coaching clients. Instead of taking people on whenever, wherever, at your leisure, um, we're revoking the leisure card. (laughs) And now you have to sign up. We're in waves. We're taking people on a few times per year. and It's an enrollment-based system now instead of a come-as-you-please. Yeah. And if you are not ready, if you're not ready for coaching at this moment, but you know you will be in a couple of months. Within the next few months. I would say if it's any longer than like three or four months, you don't even need to add your name to the wait list, probably. But if you're thinking, ooh, I really want to do coaching, but give me a couple of months to get a few things together or get my finances together or whatever, just join the wait list. We'll let you know as spots open up because they will. But for those of you who have been meaning to sign up for coaching for a little while or have been curious about it. You're just sitting on the fence. But you haven't had much of an impetus to have to reach out to us about it. Well, here's your impetus. Yeah, I'm pushing you off the fence (laughs) one way or the other. So you have until Friday this Friday, the 21st, to let us know you'd like to talk about it. You don't have to sign up for coaching by then. You just have to sign up to say, I'd like to talk to you Yeah, I'm serious enough. I'm interested enough. I've been thinking about this for a long time. I'm ready to take some action. So we're taking on 20 new people right now. We truly do not know when we're going to be officially taking on new clients again. I'm probably not going to know until right before we do it. So it could be five months from now. I'm thinking it's going to be late fall. That's my it estimate. probably won't be earlier than that. I don't see how it could be, to be quite honest. However, 
if you're on the wait list, if, you know, now isn't the right time, we will have spots opening up randomly, but we're not going to make like big announcements about that. So you'll only know about that if you're on the wait list. So, you know, at that point, we can reach out to people as they sign up or in the order that they signed up. So, of course, also, I have to mention that, yes, we are releasing a new course later this summer. We don't have any specific information for you yet because it's still coming together. But it is going to be about getting over people pleasing. Yes. So if you're like, oh, oh, I think that's me. I'm a people pleaser. You definitely want to join the VIP list. That is also linked in the episode description so that you can be alerted as soon as we're ready to give more information about that course. Yeah. But it will be late summer just so you have a general timeline. If you want all of the details about these things, go back to last Tuesday a week ago the episode called Two Big Announcements from Us. And we go into a lot of detail. We also answer some common questions about one-on-one coaching. Like, do you work with people overseas? And what's the difference between five months and two months of coaching? So if that's intriguing to you, then please go listen to that episode. That was June 11th, I believe, was when that aired. Yes, you are correct. Okay, so now it's time for my blog. Guess what? I wrote a new blog. What? (laughs) That hasn't happened in a really long time. Okay. Give us the 30-second spiel. I can give you less than 30 seconds. 15. (laughs) Okay. I don't even need that, I think. It's about the intersection between highly sensitive people and perfectionist tendencies. Like, why they do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, there definitely is one. I have seen the pattern. I think there's a huge correlation. I have lived the pattern. (laughs) Yeah, no, I think there's a huge correlation and a causation between perfectionism and highly sensitive people. And I want to talk about it because a lot of people are struggling. All right. Well, let's hear it. Why highly sensitive people struggle with perfectionism. If I want to test the unconditional love of any friend, family member, or future spouse, I have one epic assignment for them. Go on vacation with me, and if we both make it back alive and still sort of liking each other, then we're made to last. Last summer, Kristen and I flew to Europe for my 30th birthday. We spent half the time in Austria with my brother and his wife, and the other half in Scotland with my mom. My brother and his wife only have one spare room at their place, so Kristen and I had to share a bed. By the second night, Kristen was on the couch and would stay there every night until we left for Scotland. I am uh, not pleasant to travel with, to say the least. What can I say? It brings out the worst of my tendencies. I'm highly sensitive, and not just emotionally, but in a lot of physical ways too. I can't sleep unless the conditions are just right, so forget sleeping on an airplane ever. My digestive system does not enjoy being tested with new foods, and all the overstimulation of people and noises and sights is just too much. To compensate for how overwhelming traveling is, I get super perfectionist and rigid and controlling. If I can manage and predict every little thing that's going to happen, then maybe I can actually relax. So, you know, forget about anything super spontaneous, and I laugh in the face of any plans that happen after 9 p.m., I know, I'm so fun. But most of the time, I'm actually not that controlling and not that much of a perfectionist anymore. Well, okay, this might be because my life is very simple and I have total control over my schedule, so maybe I'm playing myself. The point is, I used to be a lot worse. And the more I reflect on my experiences, the more I realize there is a huge correlation between perfectionism and being a highly sensitive person. I'm diving into that and what to do about it now. Perfectionism is a 20-ton shield. The way I see it, perfectionism is a form of control. It's the belief that if you do everything just right, then you can control the way the world responds to you. If you're a people pleaser, perfectionism shows up as, if I do everything in my power for you, then I can control how much love and acceptance you dole out to me. If you're really shy or find socializing difficult, then perfectionism can look like, if I'm perfect, then no one can find fault with me, which means they won't single me out. They can gloss right over me and not look at me at all. If you're scared of confrontation, then perfectionism could be, if I do all of these tasks to perfection, then I can avoid the extreme discomfort of someone being angry or disappointed with me. And if you're a highly sensitive person, perfectionism can sound like, If I can predict how everything is going to work out, then I will feel less crazy and maybe I'll be able to relax. Brene Brown has the best definition of perfectionism because of course she does. 
Perfectionism is not the same thing as striving for excellence. Perfectionism is not about healthy achievement and growth. Perfectionism is a defensive move. It's the belief that if we do things perfectly and look perfect, we can minimize or avoid the pain of blame, judgment, and shame. Perfectionism is a 20-ton shield we lug around thinking it will protect us when in fact it's the thing that's preventing us from being seen. Highly sensitive people crave protection. The reason that 20-ton shield feels worth dragging around is because it makes us feel safe. When you're a highly sensitive person, you experience almost everything to a heightened degree. Not only are you very emotional, but you can have such heightened empathy that you can feel the feelings of everyone around you too. It's also safe to say that like me, you're probably physically sensitive. You struggle to sleep, you're touchy about light and sound, crowds give you anxiety, and you have a delicate digestive system, just to name a few. Don't mistake me, being highly sensitive is a gift. Being able to experience the world in a heightened way is wonderful. You have a true appreciation for anything, beauty, music, art, nature, other humans that make life more joyous and interesting. You also have an incredible intuition, an ability to pick up on subtleties that other people miss and to ask questions that don't even occur to other people to ask. And that gift can very quickly become overwhelming. Feeling other people's feelings, especially if you don't realize what's happening, can literally drive you crazy. Being sensitive to food, sleep, light, sound, and crowds make it difficult to just function a lot of the time. The world can feel crazy and out of control as it is. Add being a highly sensitive person to that, and it can feel like a constant onslaught of noise and information and feelings that make you want to shut down or run away screaming. So, of course, we become perfectionists. It's a crutch, a way to mitigate how overwhelming life feels. But... Perfectionism isn't doing its job, is it? We perfect our behavior in order to manage what other people think of us so we don't have to feel the chest-clenching anxiety of their disappointment or anger. We insist that there has to be a right and a wrong answer to everything because we can't deal with the crippling fear of the unknown. We'll be safe as long as we can figure out the right way to do everything. We stay up tight and avoid spontaneity because, again, we can't predict what will happen. And being able to predict what will happen next makes us feel grounded. We hide behind walls of perfect work and perfect behavior because then no one has to really look at us. And being truly seen would be like being pushed outside of those perfectly constructed walls. Oh, and you're naked. But Brene Brown is right. The more we hide behind the wall of perfectionism, the more we try to manipulate and manage our own behavior to get the results we want from the outside world, the more we're actually harming ourselves. Ironically, We become controlling and perfectionistic to save us from the onslaught of crazy that's coming at us from the outside. But the more we box ourselves in, the more uptight and rigid we become, the more we need everything to be just right, the more we realize the hardest truth of all. The crazy is coming from inside the box. So how do we be ourselves without wanting to shut down? I promise that it is possible, at least most of the time, to be a highly sensitive person who doesn't cling to perfectionism. How? Well, here's a list of suggestions paired with past episodes of this podcast that will help you understand and put each suggestion into practice. So to start with, I want you to check out the in-depth conversation Kristen and I had about highly sensitive people on the podcast last year. It's called We Are Not the Crazy Ones, How to Tell if You're a Highly Sensitive Person from April 2018. In that, we talk about how to recognize your sensitivity and the basics of how to be sensitive without going crazy. It's a really good place to start if you've never listened to that. Then, I want you to take these three suggestions to heart. One, know that it's safe to feel your feelings. A lot of highly sensitive people shut down their capacity to feel because it's so overwhelming. The only way they can feel control is to just shut it all off and tamp it down. Except over time, that control breaks down because the feelings have to come out. So you end up feeling less in control because you're ruled by rage, frustration, explosive outbursts, anxiety, depression, etc. Learning how to slowly and safely feel your feelings can actually make you feel more relaxed and in charge. Go listen to our episode called Emotional Constipation with Joanna Platt from April 2018, for a lot of amazing lessons on how to feel your feelings in a way that feels safe. 
Two, respect your basic needs. Highly sensitive people think they should be able to push through, power on, and ignore their physical needs. After all, other people seem to be able to do it easily. But the more you ignore your sensitivity, the more out of balance you get, which means you end up knee-jerking to control and perfectionism as a way to restore order. If you acknowledge and care for your basic needs from the beginning, things can't spiral nearly as easily and you won't be constantly on the brink of collapse at all. So go listen to How to Make Your Own Rules for Sane Living, which is a blog from August 2018. Three, trust in something bigger than yourself. This has been the single best thing for helping me let go of my control issues. Acknowledging that I'm not the one who's personally turning the crank on the universe, keeping the planet spinning and my own personal orbit intact was a huge relief. True relaxation happens when you can trust that the universe has your back, that things are working out for you, and that you can rely on something grander and more infinitely intelligent than yourself. There's no need to control everything when you believe that life is working out for you, that you'll be taken care of, and that you can't get it wrong. And for an amazing introductory conversation to this, please go listen to Bonus Book Club, Outrageous Openness by Tosha Silver from November, 2018. I'm going to be posting all of those suggestions in the episode description so you don't have to remember what I just said. You can just click on that and scroll down and see which ones I've just mentioned. So the world might be scary, but it's a lot freer of a place than the tiny cramped box of control and perfectionism that you've been hiding in. It's safe to let go. How does this resonate with you? Are you a highly sensitive person who's been trying to stay sane with the armor of perfectionism? Come share with me in the comments. I had a question recently that I've had before that I think might be good timing for us to answer. Okay. Which you is, need someone ask you a question. It wasn't your question. No, someone asked me a okay. question. <laughs> which was... They signed up for our intro course, the Passion Profile Short Course. Yes. And they're about halfway through. And then they saw that we're opening up enrollment for one-on-one coaching. And they had this thought, well, maybe I should do things in order. Maybe I should finish the course and then do coaching, but you might be closed for enrollment by then. So what do I do about the timeline? Yeah, the, the timeline, that's a good question. And it doesn't really matter because all of the content that we have available is available to our one-on-one coaching clients and we work through it with you. So there's nothing you're going to, in my opinion, there's not much you're going to gain by like, oh no, I have to like do everything in order before I, actually think, I can talk to you. I actually think that the process will be much deeper if you are going through part of the short course with, with a coach, with yeah. accountability, and you can ask deeper questions and we can come up with a more more personalized plan than we can give you in yeah. a group do-it-yourself program. So I think you're going to get a lot more out of it, actually, if you do oh, totally. it in conjunction with coaching. Yeah, there's nothing that, there's nothing better than one-on-one coaching when it comes to like the depth of transformation. And so we have courses because they're helpful, but they're often meant for people who can't do anything else. And so if that's the best you can do, then like, great, then do that. But if it's, you know, only the beginning of what you can do, then obviously coaching is going to be a much deeper and more transformative thing for you because it's so intimate and it's so extensive. And there's so much accountability and consistency that you can build and momentum that you can build. And personal growth doesn't happen in a tidy order anyway. You don't have to do things no. in logical, so sequential order by no, any means. There's no like right or wrong or like, nope. I should probably finish that book or I should probably, n- no. no. Nope. Like often that is just kind of an excuse coming from a place of fear of, oh, well, if I do it all in a tidy order, then I'll somehow get the perfect results. And it's a it's a very clever means of procrastination, if you ask me. Another one I hear often is, oh, I need to like figure some stuff out before I get into coaching. I'm like, wait, what do you think we do in coaching? We're going to help you That's figure like, that stuff out. In that's the like process of coaching. A kid. So that's like a kid being like, I need to learn how to play soccer before I sign up for the, the six-year-old youth soccer team. It's like, well, they're going to teach you how to play soccer. Exactly. That's the point. Why do you, you don't need to become a soccer star before you join the soccer team. Exactly. Yeah. So if that's you, just know that is kind of the point of coaching. You don't have to figure it out first. No. like, And, and I think people think that. They think I'm not going to get anything out of coaching if I'm a hot mess when I show up. Nope. No, no. We deal with hot messes all the time. In fact, you might get more out of coaching. Yeah. 
Yeah, because you might not be a lot stumbling through into. the dark exactly. for nearly as long. And you might actually be trying to work on yourself and you might be doing it all wrong. <laughs> so just like bring us your hot messes. <laughs> Please. <okay? laughs> Our arms are wide open. We can open. handle it. Um, kind of like the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> 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 Give me all your wretches. <laughs> okay. You're so, okay. breathe free. <laughs> Um, you have until Friday yeah. to reach out to us and say, let's talk about coaching. I think this is something I want to do. And also on Friday, you're going to get a new podcast, actually a new video podcast. Kristen always calls it a podcast and she means to call it an episode. Well, nobody thinks we have multiple podcasts. I know. This is a colloquialism that people understand. I, I trust our people are smart enough. <laughs> I just want you to say episode. Is it so hard? We have a new podcast episode. That's coming fair. Out you can do that on Friday. That's actually going to be also on YouTube as a video. If side you want chat. to watch us, it's a side chat about honing your intuition and knowing Which is the another difference. Big question we get uh, and knowing the difference between your fear and your intuition. I've had so many people asking me this that I know that this is relevant to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are listening, thousands. So. Go listen to that on Friday, or you can watch it on YouTube. You can actually watch our faces. If you care. <laughs> if you care. And I don't care if you don't care. It's fine. We'll see you then. Right, bye-bye. <laughs> bye.